Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. During this live stream I decided to try and reach another star system, Proxima Centauri, which is the closest one to the Sol system, our own, and I wanted to make a crewed vessel that could accommodate two crew members and also food, water, and oxygen for those crew members for a year, and also uh, other supplies as well, docking accommodations, and of course we're going to be using warp drive and I wanted to reach the other star system and bring the Kerbals back in time so that I would be able to also resupply all the other vessels that we've got in orbit. So they had to get there and back within like a couple of months is really what we had to do. Though I was oversupplying them just in case. Antimatter um, containment unit there and of course antimatter induced fusion engine and radiators. We've got three warp drives, I'd need more soon, and I decided to strap on the food, water, and oxygen tanks on the side instead of putting them in line because it's getting too tall. You can see the hydrazine tanks, the fuel tanks there, and let's see how everything went. Okay, ignition. And launch. And we don't need that much thrust. Hold on. Back off, back off. There we go. Questionable aerodynamics, what do you mean? We've got far in here. This is aerodynamically brilliant, I assure you. I didn't put RCS on here, I've only got reaction wheels, that's probably a bad thing. We'll probably have to run the engines to turn. I was just in I wanna test it mode. Okay, making orbit. Oh, a little bit more. Uh, we'll have to coast to Apoapsis and round that out. Um, okay, I think this radiator configuration is a little bit dubious. I forgot about that. Hmm, I need to redesign that. That's not a good idea. Let's start charging. Total war power is pretty darn good here. Speed is limited, yeah. But at least we can do point 0.1. It's nice to be able to do point, oh, I mean point oh 0.01. Uh, Proxima. Proxima. Set us target. Okay. Mm, okay, target. I don't know how long it's gonna take to turn towards the target. Radiators look good. Radiators are a little bit of a problem here. I'm gonna probably revert this and change the radiator configuration. Um, we probably don't need so many radiators. Okay, we're pointed at Alpha Centauri. Well, we can fix the radiators. Like, pivot off. But, yeah, let, let's, let's worry about that later. Um, I think I need to, well, if I retract all of them, then maybe, hold on, uh, pivot off. Okay, now it works. Okay, that's better. So, in theory, we're pointed at Alpha Centauri, and I should be able to initiate warp, right? Let me have five. <clears throat> Okay. We are activating warp drive in relatively low, in fact we're actually suborbital around the Earth uh, because it's supposed to be 140 kilometers. Activate warp. And this is good because Proxima was right on the horizon. If it had been blocked by Earth we would have to wait. Okay. Maximum warp limit 0 0.06, 1, 0.16, so we can increase warp speed. Uh, where's the Earth, though? Come on. We, we can't get a sense of how fast we're going unless we've got some reference, right? There we go. Warp speed increase. Rainbow? There's only purple and blue. 
Um, it looks like it's only consuming 77 megawatts at 40. 63 times the speed of light. The numbers are not quite fitting in anymore. We're at 100 times the speed of light. Utilization 63%. I'm thinking, I think I'm going to keep it there. Let's... I have no idea about our trajectory. Um, map view... I mean, it looks like we're pointed at Proxima very decisively. Here, let's let's look at the... We're going like that. Well, I think I'm pretty satisfied with uh, 100C. I'm not going to go any faster. Yeah, I know we can time warp. I'm, uh, I'm sure we need to. Uh, I don't know how to close this window from this in- uh, hold on. We need to go back here to close that window. I'm- I'm like a little bit worried about passing off- uh, well, Proxima Centauri, Alpha Centauri accidentally, so... Uh, okay. Time warping. It doesn't really give a distance to our target. Wait, would MechJet give us a distance to our target? Rendezvous Planner. Separation at closest approach, 8 something meters. I don't even know what that P stands for. Looks like pedoflops, but with meters instead. MechJab is not made for FTL, no kidding. Probably not Pico. Yes, yeah, so that'd be a small P. Pico, Pico. Oh. Our liquid H3. Lifetime is 1.15 days, 1.14 days. We've got a lot of uranium nitride. Our antimatter lifetime is good. We need more H3, HE3, helium-3, and deuterium. Hmm. Interesting. What do you think? Uh, is microfusion's okay, right? I mean, there isn't supposed to be another fuel mode, is there? Shall we turn back? Let's see how far I get. I think we should turn back, maybe. Well, uh, let's let yeah, let's see uh, what the midpoint is. Let me zoom out here. We're, we're not quite very far into our journey yet. I'm definitely not going to reach my target now. Um, I, I want to see if I can turn back, actually. Now that we get to it. Let's say we abort. Deactivate warp drive. Let's say I want to go back home instead, because, you know... Being able to abort is important. Uh, where is home? Oh, the other side. Right? Oh, boy. Oh, there. Uh, Pluto, Neptune. Pluto will be close enough, right? Uh, focus view. No, let's go straight for Earth. Why is it not going to reach our uh, liquid helium? You know how important liquid helium is. It's not going to last. We need more liquid helium and liquid deuterium. Um, if we're going to assume that this vessel is classed for a whole year, we need a lot more. <laughs> and we've got a year's worth of food, water, and oxygen, so we should have a year's worth of helium-3 and deuterium as well. I think what we've got is about... I think the deuterium... Let, let's take a look at our uh, reactor. It's probably not got the same numbers now because we're at idle. We'll wait until we zoom towards Earth to see exactly how much more we need, but we're talking about maybe three, uh, no, uh, 150 times more, maybe 200 times more uh, helium-3, and uh, 
probably about 50, 60 times more deuterium. Well, this will be a good test of my ability to stop. <laughs> That's sort of important, being able to uh, cut at the right time. Alright, here we go. Activate. Off we go. Back home. I guess that those lights there must be home. So somewhere there is the sun. That bright one, I suppose. Holy mackerel, we have, we have an Earth uh, encounter already. That's good. We're really pointed very well at it. Uh, only five hours. Well, let's time warp a bit. Ah, yes, the gravity well. We're, but we're uh, going high above the Earth, so actually it probably won't slow us down much. Um, we're, we're at uh, Earth perhaps 860,000 kilometers. I don't think it's going to slow us down. 25 times the speed of light. Still really fast. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, 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 uh warp speed, warp speed, warp speed. Lower, 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 lower. Okay. Warp one. Oh, no, lower. Lower, lower. Actually, maybe just deactivate warp drive. Right, uh, we need to point back at Earth again. Now, in theory, we don't have that much extra velocity. We should be able to just capture around the Earth at low altitude, if we're close enough. We really don't want to be in a crash course, though. It would be good to capture without risk of crashing. But that is good, we don't have to use extra fuel past orbit to recapture. We, In fact, when we get to the other star system, we should still capture just fine. Okay, um... We were about at 200... So, let's... Let's uh, deactivate warp drive there. We have captured in orbit. Looks good. So after that, I added the RCS ports, Resistojet RCS ports there, using Hydrazine as well. They have like 500 ISP. They're from the KSB Interstellar pack, of course. And also I locked the orientation of the radiators and added the Helium-3 tanks as well as the Deuterium tanks aiming for a capacity of a year to fuel our uh, reactor. But it turns out that I didn't do the calculation quite right. Actually, this was a bad stream for calculations for me in general. So I ended up with less than a year. Anyway, back to an attempt at Proxima Centauri. Okay, uh, aviation. And launch. And let's throttle down a bit. Uh, 1.7, 1.8-ish is fine. That's probably optimal. Technically, I could go straight up, but that would make it harder to capture if we had to return. I want to actually get into a proper orbit to ensure that if I do return, I... I, I make sure that I capture. See? Thinking ahead. But yeah, obviously we could go straight out of the atmosphere. I did that with the Phoenix back when I made the Phoenix uh, in a previous version. Probably 1.0.4 or something. Aerodynamics is of the warp rings? Well, we're past the thick part of the atmosphere. Um, the air... You know, the fact that... it, it I don't know how the colliders work and all. Or how far I actually reads it. But, you know, these are a little bit of a problem. I mean, ducts like this happen a lot in, in aerodynamic design, of course, because it's basically like the 
intake of an engine kind of thing. I mean, this is a lot like the intake of an engine when you think about it. So there's drag, but it's not unheard of. Mm. Smart ASS does not like the resistor jets, I think. Look at how it's wiggling pitch and yaw. That's very strange. Yeah, something about the resistor jets. Smart ASS does not treat them like normal RCS ports. I'm gonna turn that off. I'll, I'll turn it manually. <laughs> Look at this! Yeah, Smart ASS does not like those resistor jet ports. It turns a lot easier when I'm just uh, turning it. Well, Proxy Centauri is right on the horizon. Let's change camera view. Um, hold on. Alright, let's try it. Uh, this is right at the limit of our power, so hopefully, yeah, it'll work. Uh, we're a little bit off though, we might have to correct. Someday the camera will cooperate with what I'm trying to do. Well, I can't actually go faster than a hundred uh, times the speed of light. That'll outstrip our our reactor capacity. We're at 185 megawatts out of 195 megawatts, so we can't go to 160 times the speed of light. Go away. But can we go to Proxima? Time to slow down. Ooh, we have a periapsis. No, I don't think we need to slow down just yet. We have a periapsis. One day, 14 hours, 52 minutes. We, have, we actually uh, got substantial time in the system. Nab Ball's having loads of fun. Yeah, we can forgive that. God, can you imagine the kind of numbers it has to deal with at this point? At what speed did I enter warp? About 7,800 meters per second, orbital velocity around Earth. Do I, have other, other, I do have an engine to adjust, I've got 4,000 meters per second left. But I don't think I'll need it. I think we'll, we'll be pretty good. Um... Alright, we were zo just zoomed out a lot. Let's cut warp. And see what that leaves us at. Okay, we need to be closer to Proxima to actually get into orbit. Um, so where was that dot? Don't worry. Set as target. We probably don't want to go full warp. We're actually not that far up. I mean, we're uh, 877 million kilometers only. Because uh, Proxy Centauri is really small. It's sort of like a Trappist kind of thing. We're approaching at 40 times the speed of light. That ball's fine actually right now. Well, in time warp it's not. We're currently around uh, Earth's orbit here. So it makes sense for me to cut warp now. And maybe we'll end up in orbit. Well, but that, that this would be the distance that we would need to be at if Proxima had the same mass as the Sun. We'll have to get closer. Yeah, we'll have to get closer. I wish I knew the relative mass or relative gravitational, well, relative mass of Proxima versus the Sun. It looks like 0.123. Okay, warp speed down, 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 deactivate warp drive. 
Nope. My calculations were incorrect. We are not quite there yet. We need to be closer. Hold on, just out of curiosity, how far off are we? Okay, lots. We need to be closer. Less than half of the HE3? Well, we are supposed to have enough HE3 for a whole year. We don't have enough HE3 to accommodate a whole year. But at least we can get back home, yeah. Yeah, I, we, we're, we're carrying less HG3 than I meant to carry. Hold on. We can tell by what velocity Proxima is orbiting in. Okay, Proxima is going 50,000 meters per second. We can be higher than Proxima's orbit. I mean, uh, Proxima Centauri B's orbit. But we should be relatively close. Nah, Delta V is fine. We shouldn't be using so much Delta V. Why, why does it keep changing? Hold on. Hmm. Oh, because of the warp. Ah, uh, uh, because it was limiting our warp, I see. Yes, yes. Uh, let's deactivate warp drive here and see what we're captured in. We're like this. This is good. I mean, look, we, we can almost have a tangency with that, um, that planet. We need to go to that planet, too. But there's no way we're going to be able to orbit around it without slowing down. But yeah, you see, uh... There, there is a way to figure out how to get into where orbits around things without any extra help. But um, Proxima Centauri B, I don't think it's got enough of a sphere of influence for us to get into an orbit at this speed. Well, no, uh, not sphere of influence. Gravity. It doesn't have enough gravity. Because... Its surface velocity would have to be like 7,800 meters per second or something like that, I think. Okay. Mm, we're not quite pointed at it, though. Hold on. Okay. We have a periapsis. Sort of disjointed, but four minutes. Well, it's a small star. It's a small star. Whoa, whoa, too fast. Oh, did we come out of war? Well, but we didn't come out of war. Hold on. We somehow got deflected away from the planet. Shoot. Now we have to do the whole charge up thing again. Getting into orbit? Well, with this, I mean, it's such a small planet. With a decently sized planet, it wouldn't be too bad. But with this planet, I don't think we can. With those Trappist planets, though, that are sort of Earth-sized, that, that won't be too hard without much Delta V. By the way, these Resisto jets are using a lot of Hydrazine anyway. Of course, the fact that... I mean, they say... Thrust ISP multiple. ISP is 451. It'd be better off to just turn with the Thermal Launch Nozzle, actually. A bit annoying. Still charging. Okay. Um, no, 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 I need to see the chip. I need to deactivate warp drive. Come on. Uh, let me see when it reaches periapsis. There we go. Deactivate. Okay, well, we're not going to get into orbit around this one. We're in a fairly tight orbit around Proxima Centauri. But yeah, we're just doing a flyby of uh, this planet here. At a height of 65,000 kilometers. Drop out of warp under an action group, that would be a good idea. Okay, 
I think I'm, I mean, this is, this is, this is good. Hold on. This is the first time I'm uh, visiting uh, the SOI of a planet around another star. Go away. Um, come on, I want to get the star into view as well. There we go. Um, no. No, there's no good angle here. Um... We should have persistent rotation. No, SAS is even worse. This really burns through our Delta V. They're both really bad. So you really can't use Smart ASS or SAS with these Resisto jets, or maybe even RCS this far out, I don't know. We probably didn't need all these radiators. I didn't feel like it was horrible. Then again, maybe it would suddenly... Our waste heat does seem to be building up, actually. Well, it was building up. Hmm. So maybe it is necessary. Um. Proxima Centauri escape. I see a PE there. You see that? We have a... That's a sun periapsis. Oh, different sun periapsis. Okay. What warp is that, actually? In actual uh, Star Trek terms, each warp is actually the, cu uh, the, the cube of the warp number is the multiple of the speed of light. I think that's how it is usually thought of as working. So, what's the cube root of 100? We're at warp 4.64 is actually our warp velocity in the Star Trek terms. Looks like we're not uh, too far off from Earth's orbit. We're going to have a sun periapsis of 210 million kilometers and Earth is at 151 million kilometers right now. Twenty-three days, twenty-two days. We can only also see our ETA like this. That's good too. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted this trip to be quick, is because um, we needed to pay attention to our stations and all. Right? We've got a lot of Kerbals deployed. Antimatter Station 1 is down to 57 days of food, uh, food, water, and oxygen. We'll get back home in time for that. I guess we'll wait till the intersect point. Are you coming back from a start or planet? I'm coming back from a star and a planet? We flew by a planet around another star. This isn't Sandbox, that's correct. I'm uh, trying to figure out what I might need to turn it into a career thing. But it is in Sandbox. Oh, come on, I need to deactivate now. Uh, too fast, too fast, too fast. Stop, 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 stop. Deactivate. Um, this might not be the best trajectory for us. No. That's alright though. It's because we sort of came in at an angle. Let's just focus on getting to Earth. Uh, we're still, we're still in, uh, what you got, targeting Earth, so that's good. Um, 11.2 days at this power usage. Well, we'll have a periapsis around Earth of 4,466 kilometers. Okay, we have stopped our warp drive. We are not captured. Oh boy. How fast are we going? Uh-oh. We are still going 37,000 meters per second? Okay, so... So that I did not expect. Hmm. Is it because we're going like tangent to Earth? 
Hmm. I think we need to be going in a different direction. How would it be good? Let me warp like in the other direction and see. Slow you down after warp? Yeah, well it seems it's a lot harder um, after you've gone to another star system. Warp the other way, you think so? Earth moved while traveling. Good point. Yeah, it has moved. But I really need to figure out exactly what vector I should approach in to minimize how many times I have to pass that Earth to slow down. That's another thing to learn. Uh, no. Did we have to exit SOI, do you suppose? For it to make the difference? Negative periapsis. We're gonna get close. Uh oh. Um, let's not go suborbital here. Oh, not suborbital. Crash. Let's not crash. Yeah, we're definitely maximizing the pulling power of the Earth. Yep. It's pulling. It's pulling. And I think it. We're out of warp. We're out of warp. Um. Okay. We. Uh, we're still on escape. We're still going 36,000. Hmm. So that didn't work. But we entered the SOI again, so maybe that's why? Well, I guess it's 34,000 here. We lost 2,000. After trying to use Earth's gravity to slow down a few times, I took a viewer's suggestion to try and use the sun somehow. I just wanted to experiment. But in doing so, I left the warp drives charging, which uh, sucked up all of our reactor capacity, you know, the helium-3 that was fueling our reactor, while I time warped away from the Earth. So during that little bit of time warping, I depleted all our helium-3 and left this mission stranded. Um, oddly enough, when I got back to this uh, this weekend, because this was the previous weekend, uh, the save had not saved after this point, and so we ended up having the save pick up in Earth SOI uh, so I didn't have to figure out something weird to ha uh, some weird way to handle this particular disaster though I was prepared to do that I was trying to make a shuttlecraft but since the save ended up having this in Earth SOI my plans changed and I tried to pass by Earth a few times and you'll have to watch the next episode to find out how that went but uh, there you have it we did successfully travel to Proxima to Centauri and also come back. We didn't quite make orbit around Earth, though we are in orbit around the Sun in sort of a comet-like orbit, and we need to fix that. Well, yeah, we still need to fix that even though uh, the save ended up in Earth SOI. So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.